Thanks, Fiona. Welcome to the Late Look North. I'm Adam Powell. With Adam Powell. Good evening. Campaigners are warning there'll be more tragedies in the River Tyne if further safety measures aren't made. It comes after a 14-year-old lost his life near Ovington Bridge in Northumberland on Saturday. A 13-year-old remains in hospital where he's still in a critical condition. Our correspondent Mark Denton reports. Two days on, the banks of the time were quiet today, but the floral tributes a reminder of the tragedy that took place here. A swing hanging over the river has been removed, and someone has apparently cut down the tree it was hanging from. All of this, though, an awful reminder for Carl of his loss, because almost two years ago, his 13-year-old son, Robert, died after getting into difficulty on the same stretch of river. There's things what they could put in place, like... Patrols, safety jobs. I know Sam's not going to agree, but maybe my education into schools. Cut the red tape because there's a lot of red tape to go through as a as a couple. Wish there was someone else there for people like us and what have gone through this. Do you fear, certainly today, that this will happen again? Most probably will, yeah. Well, it'll never end the recycle like it's happened again now. So it could happen again and again. Police say what happened here was an absolutely tragic incident, and their thoughts are with the families of both boys. Mark Denton, BBC Look North, Ovingham, Northumberland. Today, the final report of the infected blood inquiry concluded the scandal should have been avoided. It found victims were exposed to unacceptable risks and accused doctors and ministers of covering up the truth. One man who was infected with hepatitis C is Stuart Hall from Workington in Cumbria. He developed liver cancer and had to have a transplant in 2021. Today, he sat down to watch live TV coverage of the publication of the report and was joined by our reporter, Mark McAlinden. People put their trust in the NHS and the government and doctors to keep them safe. And that trust was betrayed. A damning verdict, but no surprise for Stuart Hall. It was pretty much what I was expecting, to be honest. To me, it was clear that there was a cover-up. Things were known about blood products and uh, donations of blood. I read something just recently, in 1973, the, the government and the health service was warned that blood donations they were taking from prisoners in the UK was five times more likely to contain viruses. Stuart Hall needed a blood transfusion to treat leukaemia 40 years ago. It wasn't until 1995 that he was told he had hepatitis C, which attacks the liver. Three years ago, he had a liver transplant. The chairman of the inquiry has said compensation should be paid without delay. Do you trust that that money will be forthcoming? To a degree, yes. I think most people would have said, give me back my life that I had before that. I don't care about the money. But there's a lot of people who have suffered financial hardship. People who were infected with HIV um, sometimes were un unable to work because of the stigma around that. So what I've been looking at uh, are people from families uh, across the UK who've gone into hospital for treatment uh, and over 30,000 have come out with infections which were life-shattering. Uh, and deaths keep on happening week by week. So, for Stuart, should there still be punishments? Prosecution has been called for, for, for people who have lied and covered up. I think that has to happen. Too many times in this country, there's scandals and there's cover-ups, and nobody ultimately pays the price if any convictions. Mark McIllendon, BBC Look North, Workington. A new study into the cost of harm from alcohol says there's been a 40% increase in the North East since 2003. According to data from the charity Balance and the Institute of Alcohol Studies, excessive drinking is costing the region almost one and a half billion pounds every year. The charity says the figures show a need for government intervention. We've seen huge harms to the NHS. You know, the figures that we've seen today coming out this morning are really illustrating the impact that it is having on the health service, on frontline services across the region. And as I said before, this region suffers more than any other. So actually, we need government action to try and tackle that. 
and this region I think would benefit more than any other in England from yeah. the, the kind of action that we're asking for on price, promotion and availability. Now, it's been quite a day for seven-year-old Charlotte from Hexham after she joined acting royalty Judy Dench to place a seedling grown from the sycamore gap tree at the Chelsea Flower Show. Charlotte won a competition at her school after she wrote a poem about what the sycamore gap tree means to her. The seedling is the first to go on public display. The sycamore gap was a big tree and the sapling is like sycamore gap's baby. So it'll be, so I hope um, the sapling grows just to be like sycamore gap. We hope so. Here's the weather now with Paul Mooney. Good evening. Well, as we head through the week, things turn much more unsettled weather-wise. That means some wet and windy weather at times for many of us. Not too much rain around overnight tonight, though. Clear skies for the bulk of the night, although we'll see some patchy cloud, especially in eastern areas later on. Temperatures will hold up around 4 or 5 Celsius at the very lowest. And tomorrow that cloud will continue to thicken up from the east, and it will start to bring some showery rain. Uh, I think the showers will move westwards through the day. One or two could be heavy but they tend to die away from most places through the afternoon. Still be a lot of cloud around, not an awful lot in the way of brightness, but where we do see a bit of brightness breaking through, 20 Celsius in the west, cooler again along that northeast coast. As we head through the middle part of the week, well, it's wetter and windier on Wednesday, still some patchy rain on Thursday. The rain back, that's your late look north. Jonathan Swindler is back on breakfast from 6 o'clock, but from me, for now, good night and sleep well.